Okay, so all I'm going to do is just look at which way the chair is pointing on any particular carbon. And whichever way it's pointing, that's the way the axial substituent will point. Okay, so hey, if the chair is pointing up, then I'm going to draw an axial substituent pointing straight up. Okay, not diagonally up, but straight up. And if the chair is pointing down, then I'm going to draw the axial substituent pointing straight down. Not diagonally down, but straight down. Okay, so hey, let's see what I'm talking about. Okay, so if I look at this chair, there's six carbons on it. One, two, three, four, five, six. And each of those six carbons is either pointing up or down. For example, let's look at this carbon. This carbon is pointing up. So hey, if you want, imagine that this is the head of an arrow and it's pointing straight up like this. So here's the head of an arrow and it's pointing in the upward direction. Do you guys see that? Okay, so if you guys didn't see how we did that just now, let's look at another carbon. And let's look at this carbon, for example. This carbon is going to be pointing down. Okay, so what I mean is, pretend that this is the head of an arrow right here, and it's pointing down. You guys all see that? And you can do this for the rest of the carbons on this chair. Okay, so, hey, this carbon is pointing up in the upward direction. This carbon would be pointing down, this carbon would be pointing up, and this carbon is pointing in the downward direction, right? Okay, so let's see what all this up and down stuff means in terms of drawing axial substituents on this ring. And I told you that whichever way the chair is pointing on a particular carbon, that's the way an axial substituent will point. So hey, let's take this carbon for example. We said that this carbon was pointing up. So if I were to draw an axial substituent coming off of this carbon, I would draw it pointing straight up. Okay, so let me go ahead and redraw another chair with all this red and green marks on it, and I'll show you how we draw these axial substituents. Okay, so we said that this carbon was pointing in the upward direction. So if I were to draw an axial substituent coming off of that carbon, I would draw it pointing straight up. So just saying that there was an axial CH3 substituent coming off of this carbon, I would draw it going straight up like this. Okay, so we drew this axial CH3 substituent pointing straight up off of this carbon. Not diagonally up this way, not diagonally up this way, but straight up. And you'll see why all this straight up business is so important in just a little bit, all right? Okay, let's do another example to make sure you have this down. Okay, so, hey, this carbon is pointing in the downward direction. So an axial substituent would point directly down. So, hey, just saying that there was an axial CH3 group on this carbon, I would draw it going straight down like this. Okay, so I want you to go home and practice drawing axial substituents on each of these other carbons. It should be fairly straightforward, right? This carbon is pointing up, so an axial substituent coming off this carbon will be pointing directly up. An axial substituent coming off this carbon will be going down. This one will be going up, and this one will be going down, okay? Remember, axial substituents point either straight up or straight down off of the carbon, okay? But this is only half the story, you guys, because I told you a substituent can be in one of two conformations. It can either be axial or it can be equatorial. We just saw how to draw axial substituents. Now let's see how to draw equatorial substituents. And this is going to be kind of common sense, but let me just tell you that equatorial substituents don't point straight up or straight down. They point horizontally. They're called equatorial, like the equator. The equator runs horizontally across the earth, so make sure to draw equatorial substituents coming horizontally off of the carbons of the ring, all right? So let's see an example. And if I were to draw an equatorial substituent coming off of this carbon, I would draw it coming off horizontally. But what direction would it go in? To the left or to the right? Well, let me ask you, 
What do all these lines, these lines represent in this compound? Bonds, right? And bonds are made out of electrons, and electrons are negatively charged, and negatives repel other negatives. So what I want to draw this bond going to the left so that it's next to all these other bonds? Or would I want to draw it going to the right because it's being repelled from all these other bonds? To the right, right? Yeah, so hey, for example, if we had an equatorial OH group coming off of this carbon, we would draw it coming off of this ring horizontally to the right, all right? So let me go ahead and draw this equatorial OH group for you on this carbon, and I'm going to draw it in blue. One important thing to mention here is that if you look closely, I didn't draw this bond perfectly horizontal to the right. It actually points slightly down. And why is this the case? Well, because that bond is trying to get as far away from these other bonds as possible. Do you guys remember what a tetrahedral compound looks like? Okay, it looks like this, right? Here was the central atom with the bond going up, down to the left, a wedge coming out of the board at you, and then a dashed wedge going into the board, like that. Well, check it out, you guys. This is exactly what's going on in our cyclohexane. It's just kind of hard to see since it's in a ring. But if you look closely, you would see that, hey, this bond is coming out at you, just like this bond came out at you. This bond is going into the board, into the board just like this bond, and these two bonds are in the same plane, just like this. They're all trying to get 109 degrees apart from each other. Okay, so don't draw your chair conformation with these dashes and wedges like for our tetrahedral compound. I just want you to realize what's going on here. These bonds are just trying to get as far away from each other as possible. Okay, so realize that these equatorial substituents are horizontal, but they point slightly up or slightly down to get as far away from other bonds as possible. All right? So the question now is, how do you know whether these equatorial substituents will point slightly up or slightly down? Well, the answer is, just look at the axial substituent. If the axial substituent is pointing up, then the equatorial substituent will point slightly down. Okay, because these bonds are just trying to get as far away from each other as possible, right? So point axial and equatorial substituents in opposite directions. So this axial CH3 pointed up, so this OH equatorial substituent pointed slightly down. So hey, just to make sure you have this down, let's look at another example, okay? So hey, let's just pretend that there's an equatorial OH group coming off of this carbon as well. I would draw it coming off this ring horizontally to the left or to the right. Well, not to the left, because it wants to get as far away from these other bonds in the ring as possible, right? So hey, we know that it would go to the right, but would it be pointing slightly up or slightly down? Slightly up, right? Because hey, if you look at the axial substituent, this axial substituent is pointing straight down. So to get as far away from this as possible, the equatorial substituent would want to point, point slightly up. Okay, so let me go ahead and fill that OH in for you. And it would be going to the right and pointing slightly up like that. And at this point, you might be thinking, well, gosh, Garrett, these two OHs look pretty close together. Are you sure we want to point this equatorial OH to the right instead of to the left? And yes, we do. We want to get this equatorial OH substituent as far away from the bonds of the ring as possible. I understand that these two OHs look close together, but it's just because I drew my ring a little narrow. If I would have drawn a wider ring like this, and then filled in the OHs, you'd see that these OHs are actually fairly far apart, okay? So hey, if you still don't believe me though, what I want you to do is build one of these chair conformations with your model set so that you can understand how far apart these bonds actually are. Because I mean, you can only visualize so much when you're writing on a two-dimensional flat board like this, all right? Okay, so I want you to go home and practice drawing the equatorial substituents on these other carbons of the ring, okay?
But if you get to these inner carbons, this carbon and this carbon, these inner carbons, and you're not sure whether to draw the bonds for these inner carbons pointing to the left or to the right, don't sweat it. You can actually draw it either way. For example, I like to draw an equatorial substituent coming off of this guy pointing to the left. Okay, so say that was an OH substituent. I like drawing it to the left. However, other people like drawing it to the right, okay? It's kind of negotiable, but if your teacher has a special preference for which way to draw it, make sure you follow that. Just realize that what you're trying to do is get that bond as far away from the other bonds as possible. Oh, one more thing to mention here, you guys, because I made a big deal out of telling you to draw your axial substituents either straight up or straight down. And why I want to make sure that you do this is because I want you to be able to clearly distinguish your axial substituents from your equatorial substituents. Notice here that this OH is pointing in the downward direction. And so it might not look like the typical equatorial substituent that points horizontally. It might be confused with an axial substituent that is known to point up or down. But make no mistake, this is an equatorial substituent. Anytime you see a bond extending diagonally up or diagonally down off of a ring, that is an equatorial substituent. And hey, another dead giveaway that this is an equatorial substituent is that an axial substituent would be pointing straight up or down in the direction that the ring was pointing. And this ring at this carbon is pointing in the upward direction. And so an axial substituent would be pointing straight up. Take home message, you guys, is just draw your axial substituents pointing straight up or straight down so as to not confuse them with diagonally pointed equatorial substituents such as this one, okay?